Chief Sol appears flanked by mongrels. The journey has taken its toll on him. His breath is labored and the sweat is dripping from his bloated face. What? What shish? And Evia gives a low whistle. Well, I'll be damned. Turns out Halloran isn't as crazy as we all thought. There really were demons down here. I should have listened and sent a patrol down here. Damn it. Horgus's lips curl in distaste and he tries to keep his distance from an unconscious mongrel. Um, honestly, though, I don't... Th this... Yeah, like, I don't understand how one would blame Anevia for this, considering we're technically in, what, mongrel territory in the shield maze and everything? Like, I, I don't suppose they actually... I haven't heard anything about them actually sending patrols down here or anything like that. Like, I, in, if there were no rumblings, if this was purely kept to uh, the mongrels currently and there was no outside force of it, then how can you blame her for it? Like, I, I, she's injured. She's been through a lot. She doesn't know if her wife's alive, kind of thing. And, like, to kind of throw that at her just feels so dickish. <laughs> Anevia, how's your leg? She winces slightly but forces a smile. Better than yesterday, worse than the day before. Not gonna die, don't worry. This place needs to be burned with holy flame. It needs to be burned with something. The place is overrun with demons, but that's not the worst part. Wenduog, she's been working for the demons all this time, luring the young, strong mongrels into the maids. He nods at the unconscious mongrels. We might still be able to save these ones. They can't get any stupider, that's for sure. But they might be meaner than they were before. I suppose all teenagers are monsters in their own way. Cell laughs, but it comes out as a rasp. Ah, oh, Lan. We don't waste... We don't waste worse on people who don't listen to the tribe. You act the fool, you suffer the consequences. Cell gives a ragged sigh. Wenduog, how could she... She deceived them, and then she left. Wash to become of us. Chin up, chief. The kids you rescued are safe now. The demons are gone and the traitor's been dealt with. All's well that ends well, I say. And you need to look after these young mongrels. I don't know what they'll be like when they come to, but look after them, chief. They went through something horrific today. Not everybody's capable of enduring something like that. It'll change them forever. As long as they can hunt, the rush can wait. Uplander, you and land say... You and... And you... the 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 the. Flander and you, Lan, you saved them. Only the gosh can salvage their souls, but we are a tribe, and we'll think of something. And when they're stronger, they can go up to the surface the time has come. Okay, let's get out of here. Chief, I think I'm going to lead our visitors to the surface. I'm going to keep going. Something interesting is happening out there in the world. Maybe it's my chance to do something more useful than skinning cave rats. Hmm. You never wore one of us. You always looked up. You think I don't see these things? Our life's not for you. You must go. But where? Where's your way out? Uh, beats me, but these bees got down here somehow. Lan searches Hosilla's body and shows you some papers and key. I don't know what these documents are, but I'm sure this key will come in handy. And Evia's eyes quickly skim over the letter. She passes it to you. Those cheeky sons of... This is all the information on the cultists in the city. Their meeting places, passwords, secret hideouts. I think we should show this to whoever's in charge of Canabras right now. As soon as we get back, we'll find out what's what. All right. I do think it is time to make our way back to the surface. However, first we should probably do a quick nap because everybody's injured. While the survivors wander the dungeons, the battle on the surface rages on. The warriors of Canabras are trying to defend the Wardstone, but their strength is flagging. Their resistance is valiant. Yet it will all be in vain if no one rises up to turn the tide. And welcome back to what possibly is another episode, or it's just me coming back to recording. So either way, I guess, welcome back to me, possibly welcome back to you. Um, so we have finally finished the whole underground mongrel area, and now we're finally uh, making our way up top, which I am actually really excited about to the surface finally i miss the fresh air so much camellia you weren't going for that long uh i can hear the sound of a battle from above says sila out of the pan into the fire same we're in the basement it looks like gray garrison okay first though does gray garrison have anything that i can use possibly i'll take this oh no i want that too so since the last time i recorded i think i streamed this once actually maybe not Wait, possibly not. Um, but I have actually had a long, long thought about where Abby's going class-wise. And I've, I've definitely made a decision on what she's going to be doing. Um, so I think what will happen from here on out is once we get to 
um, the, the I believe it's a tavern where we hang out uh, and I can respec slash we level up. What I'm going to do is put one point into Druid so we can keep Kian. And then after that, I'm going to put points into Winter Witch just because I honestly really and truly love playing as a Winter Witch. And currently on stream, I think we're doing more of a monster-ish build. It's a weird build that I got going on stream. <laughs> if you haven't checked out uh, what we're doing on stream, I'd highly suggest stopping by a Pathfinder uh, episode, uh, not episode, but stream as we've got um, literally everyone with a pet. So it's weird. Definitely unique. Definitely chaotic. So um, I think that that's what would make me the happiest. And I don't know what Anevia was doing right there. That was almost terrifying. Um, but I think that that's going to probably be the closest to who in my head I envisioned Abby being. Uh, so I'm excited for that. And we finally get to meet Irabelle. <laughs> Forget if she beats everybody if we got to jump in. Okay. I, think, I think they're just there. They won the day. And here we are. Hi, guys. The half-orc before you, armor adorned with Iomade's golden sword, is clearly exhausted. She obviously hasn't gotten much sleep over the last few days. There's soot on her face and fresh blood on her sword. Her hazel eyes are hard and focused, and her firm voice sounds accustomed to giving orders. She sizes you up, surprised, and judging whether your friend or foe opens her mouth to ask you something but freezes when she spots Zenevia. Aww, they're so cute. It's such a cute moment. I'm going to try not to ruin it. By the goddess. <laughs> Nevi, I... I'd almost lost all hope. Everything's fine, Beth. I'm here. I'm here. This here is a new friend. She rounded up those of us who survived the fall and led us up to the surface. Without her, we'd never have made it out. Let me introduce you to my wife, Arabeth Tirabade, head of the Eagle Watch. Hmm. Until the army arrives, I'm the temporary warden of Canalvaris. And you're just in time. As you can see, we're in the middle of a battle. And thank you for getting Anevia out of there. You're so welcome. It was it was an honor getting Anevia out of there. Where are we exactly? The Grey Garrison. Okay. Until recently, it served as barracks for the Crusaders. But it's now been taken over by cultists. Um, I personally have some information about a location of a cultist den. Are you interested? Very good. Report to me in full when we get back to the Defender's Heart. All right. It's our temporary headquarters. Right now, the most dangerous cultists are here. The ones occupying the Grey Garrison. And so we met mongrels. Uh, I don't know if you've necessarily heard of them or not. Uh, we made friends with them. This is Lan. Uh, he gonna be hanging out with us for a while. Most people in Canabras think that the children of the First Crusaders are simply a legend. But they're not. Other people say that the day you emerge on the surface heralds the start of the end of the world. I'm not superstitious, but the situation is apocalyptic, all right. Yep. Having a living legend on our side can't hurt. Hear that, Lan? Living legend. Come on, living legend? Yep. A walking folktale, maybe? I just need to make sure I don't turn into a running joke. <laughs> we'll make sure of it. Uh, what's the situation in the city right now? The city's gone. Most of the defenders, including the dragon Terendalev, fell in the first few hours. The civilians either fled or died in the chaos. The place is overrun with cultists and demons. Don't talk like that. Canabras hasn't fallen. Not while it still has defenders like you and me. Look at Sweet Sila. words don't change the grim truth. I hate agreeing with Camellia, but she kind of right. No, she's right. Thank you, Knight. Until we no longer have the strength to hold a weapon, until Iomade abandons us, we will fight for Canabras. As long as you guys still have something to fight for. What is the target of this battle? When the demons attacked the city, their main target was the Wardstone. I trust I don't have to explain to you what the Wardstone is and how important it is to the Crusaders. We must retake it at any cost, or the fall of Canabras will be the beginning of the end of the Crusades, 
and with them, the rest of the world. I, I get the idea behind the Wardstones. I see that you had a difficult journey to the surface. You need to rest. But there's a lot riding on this battle. I have no right to command you, but I'm asking you to help us. All right. We shouldn't, like, so... Normally, if this was, a, like, a RP Let's Play situation, um, I wouldn't ask any of the other questions because it just wouldn't be immersive. And I personally know a bit about the Wardstones, so I'm going to skip it now. But if you were playing this for the first time and you didn't, like, totally ask these questions. Let's go. That's the spirit. You, take Anavia to the rear. The rest of you with me. You hear the labored breathing interspersed with disgruntled muttering. Horgus is holding his rapier hilt with a white-knuckled grip. A bead of sweat trickles down from his temple. Lord Horgus Gworm, forgive me. I did not realize we had civilians among us. My people will escort you somewhere safe. To the extent that anywhere in Canopolis can be said to be safe right now. That's right. Fighting spirit is the one thing that we've got plenty of. <sighs> Actual fighting power? That's not so great. Fighting know-how? Even worse. But fighting spirit? <laughs> At least we're rich in that. At least we're rich in something. We could be poor in everything, Lan. For day For the queen! Kill the beast! And this is where, in a super immersive RP, I'd be like, no thank you. I'm just gonna fight for, you know, People not dying. <laughs> I think that there is one thing that you can say without a shadow of a doubt is that uh, every every one of my characters, they never really fight for said deity or royalty or leaders or anything. It's it's more for either the everyday person or they're fighting for the dog. I can't I can't open that. Or they're fighting for um themselves or like the everyday person and stuff like that never really the uh the royalty as it were also while we're here wait where am i oh my gosh that's awkward that is so awkward i'm gonna kind of do this for now honestly we'll keep tweaking it but that's good for now no wonder why I was having a hard time seeing it. Oh no, everybody. They will break against our resolve. Is that what they're gonna do? Okay. She got that going. So actually, as I record this, the first episode of this went live last night. Uh, and some of you guys seem really excited for this, which makes me really excited because I've been wanting to do uh, this Let's Play. I think I mentioned this. Uh, well, it'll probably been a couple episodes ago, but I've been wanting to play this on YouTube for a very long time, pretty much since it first came out. Uh, so I'm, I'm pretty pumped that we're going to get to go through this. Here's hoping that uh, everybody lives. <laughs> kind of thing. <laughs> They're not going to, but here's hoping. <laughs> I am still this torn. Beyond me. Really? One more time. It's still... It's still... You want to lockpick it? Fine. Uh, I'm still actually quite torn uh, between Wolgif and Darren for the romance. And this happens. Hey, I know you, so you're one of these cultists? How's it going, pal? Want to join? Your lot will all be dead soon, but, well, we'll be alive. Don't do it. I, uh, you know, I can't. Come on, leave those losers. The Crusades are over. Soon the demons will rule the whole world. Don't do it, my friend. They're going to do it, aren't they? They're going to do it. Here goes nothing. All hell, Baphomet. Cowardly traitor, I swear on the sword of Iomade, you will answer for your betrayal. Save the last one for me. Okay, let's see how, like, monitoring this battle is always, uh, interesting. Okay, so we've got them over there. Everybody's gone. No. Heal. Heal my dragon. No. Heal my dragon. Abby. Abby, heal him. Heal him, Abby. 
Woo! All right. I'm like, I always try to keep one ear out on Irabeth just to be safe. It's so weird when people... Oh, there goes Camellia. When everybody doesn't have their their normal, like, abilities and stuff like that, I still... Oh, wait, I can use that. Can I use that? Hold on. Can I use that on you? So this is really weird, actually. Considering on stream, everybody has their own stuff. I healed me. Good thing I had that wand still. Um, but, like, I'm so used to having a healer and all this other stuff. I don't have that right now. I don't got Darren with his, like, 1,200 different heals going. <sighs> so weird. Okay. Well, let's use this wand while I'm standing here for a second. See, as I was mentioning earlier, I'm still 100% torn between the two romances. So one day I'll pick. Like, can I not? Did it not work? Okay. Yeah, it did. Um, so, like, on one hand, when it comes to Darren, because he's built into the game, there's a lot, there's probably going to be a lot more content with him, which I really like. Also, given the fact that in my head, Abby is very defiant in a lot of ways, in that she's not gonna want, she doesn't want to play nice with the royalty. She doesn't want to play nice with, uh, you know, the the people that are like, oh, hail Amadei, blah, blah, blah. Like, it, that side, she's not, she doesn't want to play nice with that. She literally just wants everybody to come out of this alive. That's all Abby wants. She wants to stop the demons because they're wrong for doing what they're doing. Uh, and, they, you know, she wants everybody to kind of be free and just to be able to go live their life. She doesn't want to rule anybody or anything, and she doesn't really want to help any one person like usurp power and stuff like that which kind of fits in some ways darren also fits wolgif it's just more i don't think abby is gonna want to swindle people out of everything <laughs> and if you ever played this game wolgif is a really good thiefling uh and i don't think abby would ever be a very good thiefling so uh we'll have to, we'll have to keep seeing how she plays out uh, I think I grabbed every... Oh, no, apparently I didn't. The cultists are super interesting. Actually, Darren's take on the cultists that we'll get to eventually is, uh... is one of my favorites. I, I think it's actually very accurate. Okay. Here we go. Oh, no! What's happening behind me? Boom. Can't go back the way that we came. Guess we're here forever. That's fine. We'll get out. <laughs> What's this? Do we have guests? <laughs> Just in time. The place is a bit of a mess, and I haven't even poured the blood into the goblets yet. Why don't you... Oh! Minago, a oh, sheep man. This, I, I, the ride that is Minago is hilarious. What an unexpected surprise. Staunton, my little sweetheart. Long time no see. I've missed you so much. Have you missed me? Admit it. You missed me terribly. The voice acting for Minago is beyond on point like for the kind of character that minago is this is like absolutely utterly perfect uh, minago. you again you wench the aged dwarf from Erebeth's troop silent up to now spits on the floor his hardened craggy face like stone weathered storm weathered stone twists as if in pain minago the one who Be careful. She's one of the deadliest creatures in the whole demon horde. She was once responsible for a massacre in Canabras. She must be back to finish what she started. I love the chaotic uh, response here. Hey, demon woman, what what happened to your face? Oh, how rude. You're one to talk, mortal, with a face that even a mother would loathe. Staunton, sweetie. You're not going to let your friends speak to me like that, are you? That wench? She's the one who led me astray. She's the reason my life has gone to the abyss. She's the reason why Teresin fell. 
Oh my, like butter wouldn't melt. What I remember is how eagerly you would run to our trysts, how you begged to see me again, how you promised you'd do anything I asked. By your own free will you said this, and now you claim that Dresden fell because of me. No, no, my dear. That was entirely your own doing. I'll beat your lying lips into your filthy throat! That's one description for it. Now, Staunton, don't say things like that. Not about these lips, the ones you kissed so sweetly. Staunton, dearest, don't you love me anymore? Remember how good we were together? I was so hoping that we could patch things up. I... I... M I don't know if anybody ever wants to patch things up with you, Minago. It's more like you sweet-talk people into thinking that they do, but in actuality, they don't want nothing to do with you. I'll kill you! Yeah, that's what I was thinking he'd say. He definitely doesn't sound like he wants to patch anything up. And she leaves. Minago, get back here! Quickens. Oh, no. Oh no, sometimes I hate that when it happens. Like if your mouse is down here and like you don't have your hand on the mouse, the whole game's like, let me go to the edge of the screen. <laughs> okay, are we gonna all make it? Possibly. If not, well, it was it was a good run. Oh, there goes Kian. He got a heal at some point. He definitely is still a, a, a baby dragon. Okay. Key up now. All right, so basically, can he, am I? Okay, good, we're still technically at the right point for that. Okay, actually, while we're here, let's just, let's just be safe. Let's just heal everybody. Good, excellent, everybody's healed. Oh no, select everybody. Um, I'm gonna take that and this and that. Good, excellent. I know, I know. What are you gonna do though? Land? Can you help? Apparently, Lan can help me. As soon as you step into the chamber, your vision seems to darken. Your knees buckle. You struggle to keep your balance. The air here is laden with power coming from the stone. Suddenly, your head is filled with voices screaming, whispering, cackling, threatening. Voices pleading for help, shrieking curses and taunts. You blink and the illusion passes. Hmm. Congratulations. Thanks. You made it all the way here. This is it, your precious ward stone. But what are you planning to do now, hmm? I could kill you where you stand. But wouldn't it be nice if you could die in battle like heroes? No. I want you to die in despair, scrabbling around like rats in the blighted ruins of your city, blind and broken, your flesh scabbed and seeping, and every moment knowing precisely what was done to you. She definitely has a second agenda going on with how much she wants you to suffer, and I don't think it's just Monago being Monago kind of thing. Sounds terrifying. Doesn't it? Except that's how we've been living for generations. There isn't a soul that can resist the temptations of the Abyss. Even a stone can be turned. I'm not joking. Your precious ward stone, weakened from the injury inflicted by Discari, has almost succumbed to my charms. Soon the whole barrier around the world wound, the gift of your useless goddess, will be a weapon of the abyss. Just a little more and boom. <laughs> Every city with one of these eyesores stuck in the middle of it, from Canabras to Nerosian, will turn into smoking craters, and all the mortals into red sludge beneath our hooves. Yeah, no thank you. So you have a choice. Especially you, my pet. 
Kiss me on my dainty hoof. Pledge your loyalty to Baphomet. And when the world falls, its ruin shall be yours. I'm sorry. Let's talk about who you are first before anybody considers kissing you anywhere, especially your dainty hoof, which I doubt it's actually as dainty as you're making it out to be. You've already forgotten me. Yes. You mortals have awfully short memories, even shorter than your little lives. Staunton, sweetums, don't you want to introduce me to your friends properly? And it was such a charming little place until you sullied it with your presence. It had such lovely boulevards, quiet and shaded. You took those away from me, and I shan't forgive you for that. So, I accidentally hit the space bar, <laughs> which continued it. I'm so sorry. But Minago finishes with, I am Minago, Lily too, a faithful servant of Baphomet and a leader of his armies. The city is mine now. I'm just starting to settle in, get things just how I like them. But once I'm finished, I promise you the result will be simply to die for. She literally wants you to die for these results, by the way. They've done much worse things than spoil the promenades. All the people they've killed. Pretty much. Yes, yes, of course, you're right. I grieve for the common folk as well. Do you really, Camellia? Have you really ever grieved for the common folk in any way, shape, or form? You feel righteous fury spell within you. How dare this demon besmirk the ground of this beautiful world with her hooves, a world created by the gods and cultivated by mortals. And these cultists, how dare they betray all that is sacred in this world and join forces of the foulest evil? Can they repent and redeem themselves? Or have they followed the path of evil past the point of no return? The ward stone seems to sense your thoughts. The chamber grows slightly brighter. Uh, okay, so... Shut your filthy mouth, scum. I don't know if I picked this one. I got to. Make me. One of the sweetest spoils of war is gloating over your broken and humiliated enemy. You want to deny me that pleasure? Absolutely. I would like to deny you every single pleasure you ever thought you could have, ever. You feel a sudden rush of wild rage, and with it comes a feeling of monstrous, unbridled, destructive power. It's like the power you felt in the shield maze when you were confronting Savamalik, but now it feels more fully fledged, more conscious. What are you doing to the stone? Well, quite. What am I doing to it? Probably the same thing I did to many of your comrades. Sweetly and tenderly persuading it to abandon the mortals and join our side. Prepare to fight to the death, demon! We won't let that happen. Honestly, I think I did once the succumbing to the rage. It wasn't my favorite, kind of like in the shield maze. It's just not one of my favorite options. So we're going to go with the good one. Uh, your, victory your victory celebrations are a little premature. Actually, that line also sounds a little snarky and I do enjoy snark so it's kind of a you know buy one get one free special there my dragon echoing the holy flame erupting from your hand the light also gets brighter and brighter until it floods the chamber you hear the voices again stronger now they repeat your words like a choir of angels hey no eyes didn't you tell us that heaven had turned its back on us and no one would come to our aid? Don't listen to her. All she wants is for you to lose hope. She's not going to succeed. I'm done with this shit. Yeah, you are. I only followed this hoofed menace because I thought the Crusaders had had it. And there was no other way to protect my family. But now I see that there is hope. I won't bow before these heinous idols ever again. If they kill me... At least I'll die a decent death. Yes! Return to our side, friends! Have courage! We will welcome you back! And heaven never abandoned you, no matter what this deceiver told you. Turncoat, I'll cut out your heart. We'll see how tough you really are. We let you frighten us once, but it won't happen again. All right. So some people have gained their courage, other people not so much. That oh, how did I know we can't get hit with fatigue? Hold on, hold on. I want to do that. Land. You crossed the wrong line. Yeah, pretty much. Let's do this. <gasps> what are you doing, Abby? This use this this here. Abby, why did you walk over there? Oh no! 
Oh, no. Okay. Well, everybody died. There goes my plan to try to save people. That's it's fine. It. I'm tired of playing around now. You want to know what will happen when I'm done with the ward stone? Here's a little demonstration. That was so funny. I literally thought Abby would just target him. I didn't think she'd go over and try to punch them. <laughs> oh no. The demoness whispers a spell and a wave of darkness sweeps through the chamber. Your companions wince in pain, but it's nothing compared to what you feel. Thousands of voices ag once again burst into your mind, drowning you in their moans, screams, and sobs. Pains rocks through your skull. Uh, duh, your spells won't work. It won't stop a right. No, you won't break us. We'll never give up. We will never give up. We will not break. We will not run. It would be a shame if you died without ever surrendering. But honestly, I'll be satisfied no matter what way you die. The roar of voices blends into an unbearable wall of screaming. Your vision goes dark. 